My name is Unkar Jagdare coming at you from Detroit, Michigan. And today I'm going to talk to you about what are your options if you get your H1B denied for the third time. Now, before we get started, I would really appreciate if you can give me a thumbs up to the video because it allows me to reach out to more people just like you. So let's jump into the topic. So let's say, imagine if this is your third attempt at H1B and you get denied, what are your options of living in America or maybe possibly coming back to America and continuing applying for H1B in the future. So number one option in my opinion is, let's say you did a master's degree here, you can jump a degree and go for a higher degree. For example, if you did master's, you can go for PhD. And with the PhD, once you graduate, you can get three more years of OPT and STEM OPT together. So that is one way for you to continue to live in US, make money and also, you know, eventually again get chances towards your uh, h1b the only issue here is you have to you know maybe study again uh, you may not be able to make the income you're making in your job so most phds are actually funded your professor will pay for you uh, most phds which require labor you know which require uh, you to do research on campus will require something like that so let's say you get into a phd program it will be most probably about three and a half to four years if you have a master's and during that time you may get a monthly stipend about 1200 to 1500 depending on which state you are maybe or university you can even make two thousand dollars so that all depends upon you know your phd program now that's one of the options you know but eventually you'll have to get back into the job world go through this process again so that's how you get your opt again after four years now you know that feels like a long time in my opinion the second best option which i did was i had my undergrad here and i wanted to continue working after my h1b was denied so i went for a master's um, if you have a master's, you can also do that. You can do a second master's, but you can attend a university which allows you to start working on the first day of your uh, school. Um, you know, there is a slang for it. They call it the day one CPT program, uh, but there is no such thing as day one guys. You know, there is no such thing or like a university which is called day one CPT university. It's just a name people have given it basically what it means the program the university has built in is they have designed it in such a way that you are allowed to work from the day one from your first day of college now that's an incredible program there are multiple top class universities which do this uh, for example university of michigan and arbor university of michigan flint they have a program where they actually if you're doing an mba or stuff like that you can actually access cpt on your first day now on top of that there are other universities also which allow you to do this now in i i can only talk about the university i went to uh, which is harrisburg university and I studied there, I did my master's there, and I was able to, you know, basically confirm that they are accredited and they have all the things legal. Because what happens, you see, if you're at, let's say for an example, University of Michigan, you have to attend classes on a weekly basis on campus. But there are universities which are designed for people who are working. So this can be an executive master's, which means you are attending classes on campus maybe once a month so for example when i went to harrisburg i attended classes three times per semester but i was on campus attending classes so that's what made it legitimate so if you are going to university where classes are only once a semester or they are not even in person and just online i would be skeptical about it you know because i don't know i don't have the research which proves that this is legal how do you know how do you know it's legal? Because, you know, let's say eventually, let's say you get an H1B and you get an RFE, which I had gotten. I had to prove that I was on campus. I had to prove that, hey, you are in Detroit, your college is in Pennsylvania. How did you, how is this legal? How did you attend college? Were you attending college? How is your work, uh, whatever work you're doing, is it related to your university? Because I claimed uh, I was able to access my day one CPT on the first day and I started working as soon as I started my college. And because I studied project management, I was able to connect it to my engineering schooling. Uh, my job is a civil engineer where I work as, I do a lot of work 
to be honest, it's all project management work. We do scheduling, cost estimation and stuff like that. So I was easily able to connect it to my work. So these things I had to prove when I got an RFE. And this is where you have to do your research, where you have to identify that the university, which wherever you are going to is actually legitimate and they can get you an H1B eventually if you get it. And if you get an RFE, they are able to help you get it. And I was able to do with that that with Harrisburg University. If you need any help with Harrisburg University, I will drop my email and my Instagram. You can connect with me and I'll be more than happy to connect you with Harrisburg University. Let's talk about a third way which you can stay in US. Now, this is not really a way you can stay in US because you have to exit US for a year and work in another country for a year and then come back. So I know a lot of people who go to Canada or who go to UK or India, they work for a year for their company and then come back to US on an L1 visa. So this is one of the ways you can come back on L1 visa. You again get four, five, six, seven opportunities. It depends, I'm not exactly sure. Um, on L1 visa, you again get chances to, to apply for your H1B. So now these are all three ways for you to stay in US. There are other ways also guys. Um, you know, fourth way in my opinion is an O1 visa. Look into an O1 visa where I've made a video on O1 visa on how you can, um, how you can actually prove to the government that you are an extraordinary individual and you have capability uh, capabilities which are useful to America. And you can get a specialized visa or a called Owen visa where you can even do a business if you want to. Owen visa has no restrictions which H1B visa has. So Owen visa is one of the best ones in my opinion so far. Another thing about Owen is get a three-year visa and then you have to continue renewing it for one year at a time. So I think you can continue doing that for a number of times. During this time, you still want to apply for a green card because eventually you will need a green card to continue working here. Okay, so that is one way. And obviously, you know, if you're talking about O1, you want to talk about EB1A category, which is the, you have to be extremely qualified for EB1A visa because it's not for anyone. You know, I remember talking to a lawyer and he's like, hey, it's like the Olympics of, you know, uh, visas. It's really, really tough to get that. It's like winning a gold medal. So all in all, it just means that the difficulty of EB1A category is really, really high. And so, but if you have a PhD, if you have a lot of research, you have published papers, it may be a good idea for you to look into this because within, let's say, if you put in a year or two years of work, you might be able to get an EB1 visa. Um, and that's directly a green card. You never have to worry about all of this song and dance other people have to do. Uh, but I think that's pretty much what I had for you. I post my information in the bio. If you, if you have any questions, if you want to talk to me, if you need to connect with Harrisburg, I will um, feel free to reach out to me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.